This time it's touring on a 125 motorcycle. Before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. Towing on a 125, can you, should you, is it dangerous? Maybe you should just forget the whole thing. But hang on a second, did people not just tour the entire planet on machines as humble as the Honda Corb? Well there you are, that's the argument settled. It is indeed possible to tour tremendous distances on a 125 or maybe something even smaller. But of course things are never that simple and there are certainly things you need to take into consideration if you are planning a trip on a smaller motorcycle. Let's consider Europe. After all it's only a few short miles across the pond isn't it? Hold your horses you well plate riders. Your licenses aren't recognised in Europe. So provisional licence holders won't be travelling there on their own steam. So if towing across the vast expenses of Europe is your main ambition you're going to need at least a light motorcycle license if you're going to be doing it legally. And of course there's roadside recovery and insurance to think about. Now most policies will provide about 30 days cover in Europe but you need to check your policy first just to make sure you are covered. So check that small print. There is of course always the option to purchase your insurance at the border but it's generally easier to purchase it before you leave. On a small bike you will need to give serious consideration to the route. With a full lightweight licence, you may be legally entitled to use the motorway, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a good idea, because you really will struggle to maintain high speeds, and the idea of a truck running up your back end isn't at all appealing. So on balance, keeping those motorway miles down to a minimum is probably the best idea. And certainly sticking to single carriageways, or maybe dual carriageways, is probably the best way to go. So it's using the best roads that really fit in with your personal preferences and of course, which are also best suited to your machine, is essential if you're going to have the best possible experience on your journey. So plan your route very carefully. While a 125 is very well suited to the hustle and bustle of urban roads, they can get very tiresome after a while. So a route with a more varied mix of road types will definitely make for a more involving experience. And the nippy nature of small lightweight machines makes them perfect for nipping through European traffic or carving through mountain passes. Well, downhill at least. Well that's your route all sorted out, but what about your mighty steed? Which bike is best for you? Well something with the best possible performance would of course be handy, but it's not at all essential and you can still have a really great journey and cover big distances with a machine with quite modest power outputs. And ultimately it does come down to personal taste. The best machine for you is the bike that you most want to be on no matter what that may be. Now you may take the bike that everybody else tells you is the best bike for the job. But if you don't like that bike, if you just don't get on with it, that is going to take away from the overall experience. And you won't get the best out of the bike anyway. However, having sufficient power to, to perform a simple overtake safely or climb a steep sided valley is never a bad thing, is it? Now that's not the same as saying that 120 horsepower is essential. Sometimes just the 12 is more than enough. So what about sensible modifications? Well, you can't simply buy luggage for most 125s off the peg. Most of the time hard luggage simply isn't available, so you may need to modify the machine to fit whatever luggage there is available. And of course soft luggage is a very good option. It adds less weight to the machine. Weight is very important on a small bike. Not just because there's less power to deal with the extra drag and of course the weight, but of course these machines will be lightly constructed. Adding on too much heavy luggage will probably just result in a cracked rear subframe. Fortunately Tom's Dellum was quite a heavyweight construction by 125 standards. So adding hard luggage to the machine wasn't too much of a problem, although of course it wasn't actually commercially available. So I modified a pannier frame that was designed for a completely different machine and I think the overall result works pretty well. So what if something goes wrong? Well of course having roadside assistance is a very good idea particularly if you're travelling internationally. But you're still going to need to do some maintenance yourself, so you'll need to know how to do basic tasks on your machine. Lightweight machines tend to have fairly flimsy chains, 
and these are bound to stretch during a long journey. So adjustment and lubrication is very important, especially if you're traveling in poor weather or of course on trails. And it's a very good idea to carry some sort of puncture repair outfit, whether that's a tubeless or a tube tire. And of course, know how to use it. And taking odds and ends like tie wraps and the odd nut and bolt really couldn't do any harm. Just in case you have some sort of failure. It's important to remember that in general, that a smaller machine will need more regular maintenance than a larger one. The service intervals on most 125s are usually between 1,000 and 2,500 miles. So if you're on a longer trip into say Europe, you are going to need to change the oil and filter at some point. But unless you're in the absolute middle of nowhere, this shouldn't be a problem and the oil should be easily available commercially. So as long as you've got the basic tools to change the oil and filter, this shouldn't be a problem. But if you are worried, you should be able to carry the oil and filter with you. After all, they only take about a litre of oil and that won't take up a lot of space. And a lot of 125s don't have a proper oil filter anyway, but there may be a strainer that you need to remove and clean. So all in the tools and spares shouldn't take up a lot of space. And on a small bike, space will be at a premium. So when packing, be sensible and realistic. Take only the items you actually need. So there you are, you've chosen your machine, you've chosen your route and you've chosen your destination. So you're all set and ready to go. One final tip I would say, don't wear a rucksack. The weight of it will push you into the seat and you'll get a numb bum in a matter of a few miles. But now, suitably suited and booted, you're ready to tour the world. In bite-sized lumps of course, because if you tour more than 250 miles a day on a smaller bike, you're going to be exhausted. And you'll get increasingly so day after day, so be sensible. And if you are, I can promise you a truly memorable experience. There really is nothing like touring on a motorcycle, no matter what size that machine may be. Well, I do hope you found that useful, and I hope it inspires you to get outside, and whether it be on a push bike or a motorcycle of any size, you get outside and just enjoy the world around you. So if you enjoyed that video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and of course, thank you very much for watching.